Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is the fourth film in the storied franchise, and fans were excited to see their favorite archaeologists again for the first time in 19 years when the film came out in 2008. Crystal Skull was a box office hit, but fan reception was divided at best. But while Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull certainly has its flaws, it's a much better film than a lot of fans remember. Let's talk about why. But before we do that, just a quick reminder to like the video if you enjoy it, and if you want more content about Indiana Jones, Star Wars, entertainment, and video games, subscribe to our channel and head to our website, strangelyawesomegames.com, for even more great content. So let's get this out of the way right away. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull isn't the best Indiana Jones movie. We're not here to argue that it is. It is, however, better than it gets credit for, despite how divisive it was among the fan base. One of the reasons that fans were so split on Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was because it was such a departure from the original three films, in both story and style. But, given the time period that it was set in, not to mention the time period that it was filmed in, the choices are not just appropriate for the story Spielberg wanted to tell, but they actually make the movie better. While these original three films were set in the 1930s, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was set in 1957, in the midst of the Cold War and a whole new set of challenges for our hero. But before we get to that, the biggest factor in the change in tone was that the original trilogy was designed to pay homage to the pulp action serials of the 1930s. With the fourth film set in the 1950s, the focus and style would change to what was popular in that decade, B-movies and aliens. Crystal Skull has more of its runtime take place on American soil than the first three films combined do. That's not just due to the story, it's an indication that more of the conflict lies at home now than it ever had before. The enemies are both within and without, and Jones at times isn't sure who the enemies actually are. The 1950s were a time of paranoia and internal strife in the United States, and the plot of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull represents that. McCarthyism is in all its glory here, as Indy is accused of being a communist sympathizer, even losing his job as a professor in the first act of the film. McCarthyism was driven by a fear of infiltration, which manifests itself a couple of different ways in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. First was the prevalent fear of Soviet mind control experiments inside the United States. The U.S. was far from innocent on this front, with Project MK Ultra beginning in 1953, but propaganda in the 1950s led to a fear of the Russians finding ways to control the minds of Americans. It's an easy way to paint your enemy as brainwashed, and it gets referenced in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull in a couple of different ways at different times. First, when we see Spelko try to read and manipulate Indy's mind at the start of the film at Area 51, but not Area 51. Second, in that Russian camp in the South American jungle. The height of the Cold War was known for the constant threat of nuclear war. I know people who remember doing the nuclear bomb drills in schools where you'd have to climb under your desk and hide. Indiana Jones finds himself in the midst of Doomtown in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, not to be confused with the Temple of Doom, Doomtown will look shockingly familiar to Call of Duty fans who know and love the map Nuketown from the games. It's also provided perhaps the most infamous moment in the entire Indiana Jones franchise when Indy survives a nuclear blast just by hiding in a lead-lined refrigerator. Let's talk about that nuke the fridge scene, though. Don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing it. It was pretty absurd then, it still is now. But it's more than just finding a way to get a nuclear blast into an Indiana Jones movie. Spielberg actually has something to say with the sequence, and if you can put the silliness aside, it's pretty effective. Spielberg's known for including gags like this in his films, so there's definitely some of that in this sequence. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull actually begins with the Paramount Mountain turning into a molehill after all. But there's also a message about the hero of the film in the nuclear blast scene. The world has changed. Nuclear war was thought unfathomable in the 1930s, but Indiana Jones has survived through it all and can still thrive due to his intelligence, creativity, and toughness. That's shown in this scene when he figures out a way to survive a nuclear blast. You're still well within your rights to hate the scene, but I think those messages were part of the purposes of it. At the end of the sequence, Jones walks up the hill and stares at the mushroom cloud, which is the character looking at the world as it is now to him. Finally, during the Cold War, knowledge was power, and the nation that had knowledge had the advantage. It makes sense that an Indiana Jones film set during this period would have the ultimate knowledge be the treasure that's being sought in the film. At the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Spelko says she's essentially great at her job because she, quote, knows things and knows them before anyone else. Right away at the start of the movie, knowledge is being established as the ultimate weapon. Of course, Spelko wasn't worthy of the knowledge that she sought, and the interdimensional beings were her demise in the third act. Even though Indy doesn't leave with the prize, he does achieve greater knowledge, thus finding the treasure. 
He learns that he has a son, Mutt Williams, played by Shia LaBeouf in the movie, and learns that he still has feelings for Marion Ravenwood. In a film about mortality in a changing world, Jones learns that he has a lot to live for in the later chapters of his life. You're still free to not like the movie, though. It's probably my least favorite of the five, but some of the things it gets hate for actually make a lot of sense, and it's a better movie than it often gets credit for. It had more to say about our world than any of its predecessors, and maybe that's what some people don't like about it. But all art has something to say about the time it's made in, and I think Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull does a great job saying something about the new time the character is in, as well as the world we were living in in 2008. But what do you think? Does Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull deserve better than the reputation it has, or is it just not very good? Let us know your thoughts on the film, and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to never miss a new video on Indiana Jones, Star Wars, gaming, and more. While you're at it, head to our website at strangelyawesomegames.com, and if you enjoy this type of content, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash strangelyawesome. Have a great day, everybody.